write this also. Because of your dream. <laughs> you will need to be generous with your gifts. <laughs> you need what? Generosity. Generosity. Generosity is a tool for you to be moved towards your dreams. Look at somebody and tell them, be generous. Tell them again, pastor is saying, you must be generous. And I will give you two instances of people who had a dream. One of them is Abraham. You remember? Abraham is believing God for a son. He has waited and waited and waited and waited. It seems like this is not happening. Somewhere, I think in Genesis chapter 18, there, I'm not sure, but around that place. The Bible says there are men who came to his house. You remember? The man is old already. The man is very rich. The man has servants. Men and women servants. But when these men come to his house, he took personal responsibility to serve them. He is not only serving them. Can I tell you something? Some people you don't need to send somebody to serve them. Some people you need to serve them yourself. Because if you send somebody to serve them, those who will serve them will go with the benefits. It is Atabashatikas. It is Abraham who needed the son, not his servants. So when the angels came, he did not assign servants to serve them. He served them himself. It is me that needs a son. There are some guests that come in your house. You don't send house helps to serve them. Because what these men are carrying is not for house help. It's for the owner of the house. Let me ask you, if I, <laughs> if I come to your house and it is your house help washing my hands, feeding me and doing everything, who do you think I will pray for more? Yeah, it's a principle. It's a principle. looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried. Old man. A old man is running in his own house. He is not giving orders to the servants to run. He's the one running. Ask somebody, do you run in some things for yourself? Yeah. yeah. He was running. Old man! Sometimes it is our dignity that makes us miss God. Sometimes it is our positions that makes us miss God. Old man, very rich. Abraham at this point is very rich. Very rich with many servants. With many workers. With even soldiers that he has trained, born in his house. You remember that is what he used to rescue Lot? A army. So he has all the servants. But the man, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. The man is rich, but still humble. That's our problem. We get something small 
even our walking will change. We no longer greet people the way we used to greet them. Look at somebody and tell them, that's your problem. That could be your problem. <laughs> yeah. That's why there are groups in churches. Doctors work with the doctors. Teachers work with the teachers. And market people we work with market people. It has never been organized like that. God has, look, God is very strategic. You must get it. God is very strategic. The reason God does not put people who are the same in the same place. That's why a marriage is of a man and a woman. Because they are not the same. That's why you see, if this man is, are you married? <laughs> the Dari is married. But if you, re, if you check them carefully, you will realize that they are not the same. Who is, who is talkative between you and your wife? You. Can you imagine if God would have brought a talkative woman like him? The house would be burning. <laughs> Can I say something? It is not the similarities that attract us together. It is the differences that brings us together. Am I saying something? Yeah. So if we work with the teachers, if you work with the teacher because we are teacher, you are missing it. Am I saying something? That's why there are groupings in the church. Look at what, look at the way God sees it. How many of you remember Lazarus? How many of you remember the rich man? God is very strategic. He brought the rich man and the poor man together. The rich man and the money to change the life of Lazarus. And Lazarus and God to change the life of the rich man. And both of them missed. They missed it, both of them. The rich man never looked at, never bothered with Lazarus. And Lazarus never bothered with the rich man. Actually, he desired to eat from. He did not desire to eat from the table. He desired to eat what fell. That is to say, he never desired to fellowship with the rich man. Because if they fellowshiped, Lazarus would give the rich man what he earned. And the rich man would give Lazarus what he earned. Because we give what we have. And everybody has something. Look at someone and tell them, stop this grouping thing. Am I saying something? Thank you, Dr. Harry. Am I saying something? Yeah. That is why we have no balance. Possibly. You that think you are doing well, there are people who seem not to be doing well. If you interact with them, they will help you do better. Because nobody is self-sufficient. We are completed by the involvement of others in our lives. Look at somebody and tell them, no more grouping in the church. Go to somebody else and, and tell them, actually, it's only that pastor doesn't want, he would have changed you right now, the one you are sitting next to. Because sometimes, even the sitting arrangement is a problem. <laughs> yeah. Am I saying something? Abraham is serving this man. My point was this. Your generosity moves you closer to your dream. You remember these guys before they left? What did they say? Eh? What did they say? I, the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. When they were leaving. 
they left him closer to the promise. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. When they were coming, Abraham had no idea when the sun will come. When they were leaving, Abraham knew it is next year. He got closer. Someone and tell them, be generous. Your generosity is a mover to move you close to your dream. Your generosity. Joseph is interpreting dreams for the well being of other people when he is in trouble himself. He's generous with his dreams, he's generous with his gifts. Help people even when you are in trouble. Give even when you are in need. Help people even when you think it is you that needs to be helped. Be generous. You are getting closer to your dream. Because of your dream, you will need to observe the principle of the right thing. Did you hear what I said? Remember, as you move towards your dreams, the devil is organizing on how to divert and hijack you. Are you getting it? Potiphar's wife was used by God and at the same time used by the devil. It depends. If you are available, if you are available in the morning for God, God can use you. And if you are available for the devil in the afternoon, the devil will still use you. The Bible says, let me ask you something. Let's talk. What is this that the wife of the army commander that is seen in a slave boy. Slave. A man without a background. A man he doesn't know who's, who are the parents. A man, he, she doesn't know where he comes from. And yet, she wants to sleep with this boy. Can I tell you something? She was being used by the devil to abort the dream of Joseph. But Joseph observed the principle of the right thing. When you do the right thing, you are stamping the fulfillment of your dream. Yeah. Look at someone and tell them, do the right thing. Even when you are under pressure. I can see this one, you don't like it. It's, I can even change my mind and decide to preach this more. It's called the principle of doing the right thing. Joseph did the right thing. And because of doing the right thing, God ended him up in the right place. If you do the right thing, God will take you to the right place. Look at somebody and tell them, do the right thing. No matter the pressure. Greet them and tell them, do the right thing. No matter the pressure. Let me warn you that you will not become popular by doing the right thing. <laughs> you will never become popular by doing the right thing. But it's the right thing to do. <laughs> do the right thing. It will end you in the right place. You might not become popular but you will end up in the right place. If Joseph would have slept with this woman, that would have been the end of Joseph. We will not be talking about him today as a reference. That would be the end of him. Some opportunities are not opportunities. They are just terminators. Sure. You see, you are quiet now and that is the problem in the church. When we are talking 
you will be blessed. Yeah! When we talk about doing the right thing. Yeah. That's the problem. Oh. Joseph did the right thing. You remember Daniel? They conspired and they said, this man, his strength is his prayer life. Let us come up with a law that will stop him from praying. But even when he knew that the law was signed by the king, he still did the right thing. Even when there were dangerous lions waiting for him, he still did the right thing. His brothers, Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when fire is waiting for them, they still did the right thing. That is the weakness of the church. That is why we don't see genuine believers in high positions. Because we join them in doing what they are doing. Can I tell you something? Character is built with the time. So, you will not do the right thing today and they are celebrating you. You will do the right thing today, they ignore you. You do it tomorrow, you do it next year, you do it five years after five years, I guarantee you, they will change their testimony about you. Yeah. Because of your dream, you will need patience. You need what? Yeah, because a dream is not an overnight thing. You need patience. Joseph was thrown in prison for no reason. And he was in prison patiently. He did not do appeal. <laughs> if we would have done appeal, the battle would have come when he is out. And he would have continued more. Some cases don't appeal. Just accept. I think I'm preaching. Am I saying something? Am I helping you? Because of your dream, you will need patience. Be patient. Take time. Give God time to organize things. Yeah, give God time. Can I tell you something? As much as God can do everything, God also needs time to do some things. For instance, God needs time to prepare the man that he wants. One day, how many of you know Jess Mayer? One day, she was asking God, I'm prepared. Why, why are you not releasing me to start the ministry? And you know what God told her? God told her that you are prepared. But the people that will be working with you are not prepared yet. So God was telling her, give me time, I prepare your people. <laughs> because your dream requires people. And if they are not prepared, and you are prepared, you will be grounded. 